Hello beautiful people of the internet and also the tube. Now in this video I want to walk you guys through some of the most cringeworthy, embarrassing and also some really nice design portfolios that I've launched over the last 10 years and at the end I'm also going to be showing you guys the process and also the redesign that I did last week on my latest design portfolio. There is so much to see and learn in this video so let's get right into it and it's going to be a boatload of fun. Boat boatload of fun. Anyways, let's get right into it. Now, there's a great website called archive.org and this has a Wayback Machine. And you can type in whatever domain you want and it will take you back in time and you can see exactly the website that existed at that specific point in time. Insane, because they cached the entire internet. So simply do that and you can see back in 2010, December 29, this is what Mizco.net looked like. This was the very first design portfolio that I launched. I think this is a little bit broken because of this toolbar that um, archive.org like places on top of the website. But ultimately, this is what I launched. I coded this myself and I had no real design, web design experience. I was still using brochure designs, illustrations and web templates that I designed to try fill up my design portfolio. But the idea of like designing something, creating it and putting it online really fascinated me and I loved coding back then. Like HTML, CSS and a bit of JavaScript was something that I loved doing. And look, take a look at the copy, it's quite cringeworthy. Um, you may be fascinated to know that no piece of A4 paper can be folded in half more than seven times. And if you haven't tried that, you should definitely try that. You, you simply cannot fold a piece of A4 paper more than seven times, no matter how big and no matter how small. That's something you can give, give a go. <sighs> ah. Five. Five times. But this was the very first design portfolio that I created and yeah, that's pretty much it. Then, in 2012, I think you guys have probably seen this one. This is the one that I went radical, I lost my mind and I did something, I just got dressed up as a ninja and I threw myself out there and to my surprise it did really well, lots of websites featured it and it taught me a lesson in life, it taught me that sometimes you just gotta effing do something really different to stand out and that's something that I've taken on board in terms of my career, in terms of how I live my life and really just not give a shit about what people think and just do what I want to do. And yeah, people appreciated this uh, portfolio design back in 2012 and actually helped me grow my personal brand. Then, in 2014, I did a, another redesign. Yeah, if you notice, like every couple of years, I do a redesign. One is to really just be able to focus on creativity, focus on a website or a design and code it myself where no, there are no limitations. I do whatever I want to do. And this was something that I was really passionate about. I started to realize using photography of myself was quite a, it was a really good tactic to really build trust with people. I also liked the idea of like putting myself out there as well after learning that the Ninja one did so well. And this is something that you guys should take away as well. With your personal brand, with your online presence in how you treat your career and how you want to grow, the more that you put out, the better it is going to be because it builds trust with people and it builds and it creates transparency into who you are. Oh, I'm also curious to know, did I look better back then or do I look better now? I don't know. Let's let's give this a shot. What where am I actually looking? Am I actually looking at the screen or am I actually looking at the keyboard? But I have to say the the jacket definitely looked be better back then. All right, why am I still here? Okay. Let's get let's get on with the video, guys. So this was another design that I created. Obviously, there's a bit of parallax there and I, I, yeah, I once again coded this from scratch and you can see the images are on different layers and the text is on a different layer as well. Nowadays, we all talk about accessibility. This is probably not really accessible at all, but back then, no one really talked about this type of stuff. So, this was the design portfolio that I created. This is the home page and let's just see the menu. Let's see if we can actually go into a separate page. Oh, it still loads, so that's, that's great. Might take a little bit Oh guys, I think this archive.org just doesn't load that quickly. So we're going to skip along and if you guys, if you're curious, feel free to jump onto archive.org and take a look at that portfolio. Then, 2015, let's just refresh this one. 
I tried to do some sort of isometric design of myself. This, became, this was actually a trend back, back in 2015. I, I saw someone do a really good um, isometric uh, d design of themselves on Dribbble and I thought I really wanted to give this a shot. And like I said, with your design portfolio, this is where you can try new things, experiment with new things, really sit down and just create what you want to create. And you can see that I was also a UI UX designer, I was also a front-end developer and I would code all this myself. I, once again, was fascinated by just being able to like have a design and then code it and somehow spit out something that does these nice transitions. You can see the header will actually transition. You can see like there's some nice fades and like these uh, case studies will slide up. So that was the uh, 2015 view, whoops. And then 2017, I started to, I think I got a little bit busy um, at this point in time because 2016 was actually when I started to freelance. 2017 was when I actually started to make my first full-time hire and started to grow my, uh, my agency, Misco Media. And you can see, I don't really get too creative with this one. Um, there is a, like a large photo of me, but it's quite blocky. There's just text on it. And here are some blog entries I did. And it becomes a little bit, I would say less creative, but more tactical. So I'm explaining, I'm doing more storytelling. I'm being very tactical about what I say. I'm trying to position myself as a freelancer, a successful one, one that's very outcomes driven, one that runs a design agency, as you can see here, Misco Media. And I'm starting to do some blog, uh, blog writing as well to, uh, to focus on content marketing. And that's where you can see that transition from really creative stuff to more tactical, strategic, business driven design. And then in 2018, I gave myself another redesign. Once again, you can see that it becomes less creative and I'm trying to position myself in a more authoritative way. Um, this big header right here is really just for SEO. Um, it looks ugly, I know, you don't need to tell me that. But really, it was just there to rank for the keyword Sydney UX designer. And you can see I've maintained the storytelling to help educate people who come to my website about what I've done. Because if you don't talk about it, then no one really knows. And I think a lot of the biggest mistake with a lot of designers is that they don't talk about, uh, they don't talk enough about themselves. And ultimately it works against them because then people just don't know about what you've achieved and what you've helped achieve for like other people and, their, and your clients. And it's really not just about fanning your own ego. It's really about helping educate people who come to your website and helping build trust with them so they want to work with you. Then I've got some client stories here. So now you can see over the years, I've started to work with quite a few um, reputable startups and clients. So I started to surface that, started to surface the logos and the companies I've, I've worked with. I'm also starting to social proof uh, myself. Um, I've done like, quite a few talks at, by this point and I'm talking about all the little things that I've done outside of design as well. So that was, um, that's that portfolio. Then in 2019, once again, you can see I've moved from being this creative amateur designer that's very creative to a more established authoritative uh, designer within the industry. Even the photos that I'm taking feel a little, a little bit more reputable, a little bit more authoritative as well. You scroll down, this is the first design portfolio that I built in Webflow as well. So I stopped coding and I started to focus on actually building it in Webflow and trying new things. So this was the design portfolio back in 2019, as you can see there. Once again, social proofing and all that. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, now it's 2021 and I just launched a new portfolio redesign. Now, before I show you that, let me show you guys the Figma file and let me show you guys how it all started and walk you guys through that process. Now, so let's head over to Figma and oh, Figma Interactive Components. Ah, guys, there we are. That's, uh, that's me, that's pretty cool. Anyways, let's go figma.com and let's head over to top secret. And before I actually walk you guys through the Figma file, I think it's really important for you guys to realize that having well-structured and well-organized Figma files is really important as a designer, as a UX designer. And I'm gonna walk you through how I've structured my files so you can learn something about this as well. So let's log in. Oh, hmm. Maybe it's in page two. Ah. 
Hmm. Guys, all right. Uh, yeah, actually, don't worry about the Figma file. Let's just take a look at the uh, live site because that's actually live right now. All right, so head over to Mizco.net. Got a nice little page transition right there. And then we've got a bit of nice little transitions that everyone loves and really wants in design. So I actually did that. And then I got a bit lazy and I didn't do the transitions for this part of the content. Now, let me give you guys a little bit of context here and why and give you guys a bit of an understanding of like how I've approached this and why I've done this. Now, as you guys probably realized in one of my previous YouTube videos, I talked about how I'm taking a step away from being a service provider, doing freelancing, running design agencies and all that cool stuff. And I want to focus more as myself and my time on building out my own startup and actually going down the startup route and trying to build a business with the skills that I've got, then using the skills that I've got to help other people build their own products and businesses. Now, now that I'm doing my own thing, then I really want to reposition myself. So at the top here, oh, if you didn't realize, I created a custom font for my own uh, logo. No, just, just kidding. I actually just grabbed a thick font and I just squished it and made it Mizco and like altered the kerning a little bit. So that's pretty cool. And then you might realize I don't have any case studies or anything because once again, I don't, I'm not in a rush to get more client work. There's actually a lot more client work that I can handle right now. So I haven't had time to focus on the case studies. So I've only got testimonials the courses and the get in touch button. I know I've talked about maybe not using get in touch buttons and maybe say get a free proposal, but once again, I'm not looking for client work and I wanna make this website as a place that people can simply uh, casually contact me if they're looking to learn about design or looking for anything. Maybe they just wanna say hi. Maybe you just wanna say hi because it's quite lonely in here. Anyways, so like in here, I've got like a nice little hero, a uh, little, so over here, we have a bit of a title here. I helped turn startups and designers into superheroes. This was a pretty much like a little mission statement vision that I want to uh, anchor myself towards. And I'll, uh, the reason why I've used this in the headline is because I wanna let anyone that comes to my portfolio know that I'm not just doing freelancing work. I'm actually helping designers and startups sort of achieve what they want to achieve. And this is my first step towards actually moving away from the service provider world. And then I've got some uh, logos of where I've been featured in. I've got a photo of myself here. It's not really going to be just a photo of myself. I've got a video lined up that will be replacing this photo. But in the Design Ship Pro, we talked about the Parkinson Law. And the Parkinson Law really is like a concept and theory around the more time that you give yourself to do a specific task, the longer it's going to take and you're gonna actually end up procrastinating. So I gave myself two weeks to redesign everything and rebuild everything within two weeks. And I had to compromise on some things, which is this video, case studies, and like lots of minor little details around this website. So it's not the final portfolio, it's going to be improved over time, but this is what I launched within two weeks. Then, over the years, as you realized, I like to social proof myself, whether it's a client, whether it's a designer that wants to take on one of my courses, it's important for them to understand that even though I look 18 and I'm not 18, I don't really do 18 year old things. I do non 18 year old things, which is like, yeah, talk on stage, take photos of me talking on stage, make myself look a little bit more important. But ultimately, I want them to understand that these are the things that I also do outside of design and I'm actively helping other designers as well. Because if I don't show this stuff, people don't know, and it's like, why are you jamming this design course in front of my face, Ms. Co? Who are you? So I need to help educate people about what I've, what I've done and what I actually do on the day to day. Then I've got a little section around what I'm working on. So very simple, I'm trying to spend less time around Ms. Co Media and more time around YouTube, um, advisory, my courses, and also the designership. Then I've, as you can see, the logos and the companies that I've worked with have grown as well. Um, there's actually been a lot more. There's around 80 companies, but I don't want to spam my portfolio with like logo dumping. I just want to put the ones that I'm most proud of. And then at the bottom, you can see that I've got a bit of a subscribe CTA for my newsletter. So you scroll up to the top, I've got some simple pages, testimonials. I thought I already had them, so I just chucked them on here. Also had the courses, like like I like I said before. I had a two week limit. So I had designs ready to put into these uh, sections, but I just didn't have enough time to polish them up. So I just had to launch with empty rectangles for now. But hey, like no one's complained just of yet. And I think I don't wanna hold myself back. Then you've gotta get in touch. 
and you can pretty much yeah that's the contact form and then you've got that loading um loading state and that's pretty much it so that is 10 years of design portfolio redesigns of my portfolio redesigns of my portfolio redesigns and hopefully you guys found this extremely sort of insightful and also useful as well. And hopefully you can take a little bit of inspiration from some of the design portfolios that I've launched and apply it to your own design portfolio. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video and I will see you in another video very soon.